Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary, if you're new here, and today we're talking about all the books I read in January, our first official wrap-up of 2024. First, to quickly go over stats, I read nine books in January. Of those, four were physical, three were audio, and two were ebooks, but I do own quite a few of them. And some were tandem reads. I listened to 24.42 hours of audiobooks, and I read 3,172 pages, and I DNF'd zero books, so that's good. I had a pretty good genre breakdown. So I read mostly romance and fantasy, and then I had basically one of all the other categories, I believe, where it was poetry or essays, classics, memoir, fiction, and YA. Without further ado, let's talk about the books. I'll go in chronological order of the books that I read. So the first book that I read was Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. This is the last book of the duology for the Letters of Enchantment series. And I gave this five stars. I wouldn't say I liked it as much as Divine Rivals, but I did enjoy it. I would say there was a lot more talk of war than romance in this book. But I just have so much love for Roman and Iris. I don't know why, but I'm just so attached to them too and their love that it just kept me going, kept me riding through all of the messiness of the war. Sometimes the war didn't really make sense and there was a lot of kind of questions that were unanswered. I think the plot was a little bit messier than Divine Rivals, but I still had such a fun time and I enjoyed it and it was a bittersweet ending, but I would definitely recommend this duology if you're into like that romanticy. And this is YA, so there's not really smut or anything like that. Like very, very, very little, but I wouldn't even consider it smut. So very good if you also are not a fan of smut in books. The next book I read was Bluets by Maggie Nelson, which was one of the options or one of the books that was in the dinner party book club that's on Instagram. So I picked it up because I was able to get a copy of the audiobook. I don't know if it was a good idea to listen to this book versus reading it. The chapters are really really short and it is kind of like a book of poetry but also essays kind of intertwined together. I ended up giving this three stars. I didn't hate it but I didn't love it. Like it was very in the middle for me and honestly probably not a book I would recommend to read in January because it is a very blue book. It's very depressing and there's a lot of conversations that are very sad but then also mixed with a lot of conversations about like sex, feminism. There was also a lot of mix of different quotes and passages from different artists, authors and all that which I did enjoy but it was a big part of the book so those parts I enjoyed but the parts about Maggie Nelson just talking about her life, talking about the color blue, I don't know, wasn't my favorite. The next book I read was These Precious Days by Anne Patchett and I tandemly read this and also listened to the audiobook that is narrated by Anne Patchett and this is basically a collection of stories. I ended up giving this four and a half stars. I found some of these stories were so good, so heart-wrenching. Um, I did cry quite a bit <laughs> at the end. Um, and during a couple different stories. Lots of talk about friendship, lots of talk about death, life, just life in general. Literally these precious days talking about day-to-day -day life. I've seen some negative reviews about it where it's not very relatable because Ann Patchett is obviously a very wealthy woman. So some of the stories were like talking about boats and yachts and traveling and all of the stuff that is kind of outside of normal people's budgets or life so in that way it's hard to relate to some of the stories but overall i find like the human experience whether you're wealthy or not you do still experience so many of the same emotions because life isn't fair for ever for everyone honestly everyone goes through things that aren't good in life especially things such as death and so those parts were definitely relatable and impactful and Anne Patchett's writing is also very, very beautiful, very lyrical, very, I wouldn't say 
it's not always flowery but just beautiful writing even if it was parts where I was like yeah that's a rich person's problem and I can't relate I still was intrigued and interested in the story also lots of quotable passages and I did write down in my review that this book also makes me excited to continue aging because life is a blessing aging is a blessing because not many people get to grow old and live a long life and having these conversations and, and experiencing these stories where these people are in their 60s and beyond is quite beautiful. The next book that I finished in January was Vicious by B.E. Schwab and I have to say I didn't love this as much as I thought I would. I still gave it four stars because it's such an intriguing concept. It's basically you're following two friends, Eli and Victor, who kind of become enemies where they um, get very interested in these people that are called extraordinary or EOs. And basically these are people that had near-death experiences and come back to life from those experiences and basically end up having some type of power that uh, relates somewhat to their death and also to the way that they like experienced and lived life before their near-death experience and they basically start experimenting and it's basically a book packed full of morally gray characters that you don't like but by the end of it you are so attached to them and it does end off on like somewhat of a cliffhanger because there is a second book it is a tuology and I've heard the second book like everyone hates so I'm kind of nervous to go into that but I found it very intriguing but it did take me long to finish and I think it just probably was January blues <laughs> that kept me from reading this as fast as I typically would read a fiction book like this of this size too and of a concept that is so intriguing to me but I would still highly highly recommend it. I feel like it's not like any other type of like science fiction-y fantasy type book that I've ever read and I am excited to get into the second book. I just don't think it's gonna be anytime soon. I'm gonna give it some time, probably in the springtime or summertime. I think I'll pick it up. The next book I read was Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel, which is a translated book. And I read it for Emmy's uh, World Tour Book Club, I believe, on Fable. I think that's what it's called. And this was the pick for January. And I honestly did not know anything about the book when I went into it. I just saw it was short. I was able to get it off the bee. And so I was like, why not? It is a fiction, magical realism book about kind of like a family where this woman, every chapter you follow along a different recipe that she makes. And you're also following along her life. And the recipe and the food that she makes and serves her family and friends has some type of magical capabilities and powers and it is so fascinating it is funny it is a little heartbreaking uh and very absurd and weird and definitely full of magical realism if you don't like magical realism you probably won't like this book I gave this four and a half stars. I thought it was fascinating. I thought the concept was so amazing. I loved all the conversation around food and the recipes because I love cooking myself. And then have that mixed in with such a like drama filled, <laughs> I guess kind of love triangle um, and magic and it was just so good. I don't want to go into too much because I, I don't want to go into spoiler territory because there is a lot you can spoil for this book, but it was amazing. I highly, highly recommend it. It wasn't everyone's cup of tea in the book club. I would say more people didn't like it or gave it like three stars versus like my experience where I loved it. So I think it's definitely a hit or miss. I would suggest maybe reading like the first chapter or two and seeing if you jive with the lingo and with the type of story and then go from there. The next book that I read in January was A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. This one I was reading since December and then I finally finished it in January. I gave this four stars 
and it's kind of similar to a lot of the reviews I have for this month where I think I would have given this five stars if I started it around a better time of life. I go heavily into my review for this in my last vlog, which was my life and lit diaries. But basically, I love Charles Dickens. I love his writing. There's nothing like Charles Dickens writing, but I feel like I could have prepared more going into this book because it is all surrounded around the French Revolution and I just didn't know much about it and they do go quite heavily into parts of the French Revolution in this book. But the drama, the love, the second half of the book especially, really touched me. I loved it. I flew through the second half of the book. The first half was quite a bit of a struggle for me, but I do know a lot of people say that their first read of this book is a little bit challenging, but with the reread, a lot of people find it. They're, it's one of their new favorites. So that's A Tale of Two Cities. The next two books that I read, I also gave five stars and I also talked about them in my last reading vlog, which was the same vlog I read A Tale of Two Cities in, and that is Kennedy Ryan's Before I Let Go. And then the second book in this series, I got The Ark, which is called um, This Could Be Us. This book follows Yasmin and Josiah, who are a divorced couple that are co-parenting their two children and also running a restaurant together. And it's basically a second chance romance. It is quite heavy. There are quite a lot of heavy topics discussed in this book. So if you would like to know, I would definitely look up the trigger warnings. But I found this so beautiful, so heartbreaking. I cheered for them through the whole entire book. I loved their dynamic. I loved both of them as their own characters and loved them even more together. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful book and definitely would recommend this series. The second book in the series I also gave five stars and that one follows Sol who when you meet her in the first book she is married to a man named Edward and we all hate him. And the second book is following her and Judah who is a single dad but kind of like co-parenting like the mother is still in the picture to two. Um, twin boys who have autism and this book was so beautiful. I don't know I can't compare them to because they're two very different stories but you get the same like fuzzy feelings for both of them and throughout the whole series the friend group is such an amazing part of it. It's like a found family and you can't help just love and adore this girl group and I literally wish I was a part of that group. Even though I have such good friends, I'm just like, oh, they're so good in this book. I really, really, really enjoyed these two books and definitely would recommend it if you're looking for a romance series to go into. It is definitely more of like heavier topics, not like rom com -y, but I still really, really enjoyed them and they do have smut in it, but not not overpowering. Then the last book that I read in January was Shiny Broken Pieces by Sona Cherry Potra and Donielle Clayton. Sorry if I butchered their names. And this is the second book in the Tiny Pretty Things uh, duology. This was a part of my 24 in 2024 so I picked it up and I gave the first book I think three and a half stars and I'm giving this three stars. So it is a YA kind of like sports drama or fiction. So it's following a group of dancers who are in this academy and they basically try sabotaging each other to be the number one in their school. And it just gets a little dark sometimes and unexpected, especially for a YA, but it is intriguing enough that I wasn't like honestly Bored at all but it just wasn't my cup of tea and I don't even know if I would have liked this when I was younger it didn't even come out when I was in high school so I would have even had the opportunity to have that experience yeah I don't know very mixed feelings I didn't love it I didn't hate it it was very middle ground kind of like Bluets except I think I did like this more than Bluets if I'm being honest but yeah the ending was also kind of mediocre like they could have continued the series if they wanted to and I'm, I'm surprised they didn't because I think this is their most popular series 
for this like co-author duo but yeah it was just okay I own the duology but I do think I'm going to unhaul it because I don't find myself ever wanting to reread this again and I don't think any of my close friends would honestly read this like over the amount of books that I have that I would recommend like this would definitely not come in like the top 100. So those were all the nine books that I read in January. Let me know what books that you read in January and how your reading year has been going. I can't believe it's already February. Thank God because January was a tough month. February is the month of love so I'm hoping to read a lot of romances this month. I've got most of my romances that I haven't read here so Let's hope we can tackle some of these. Probably coming in a reading vlog for you all very, very soon. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are and happy reading. Bye. Lazy Sunday mornings hiding under covers. I don't mind staying in with you. Play your favorite movie. Laying right beside me. I don't mind when it's just.